What's going on guys? It's Brandon back here again for another BFR. Today we have game 23 versus the New York Rangers in New York at 6.30 p.m. on December... Let's even write the date. It was December 3rd that the game took place on. Mike Penn could work. There we go. So, Hawks play the Islanders in, a, in about a half an hour from now, so I'll be watching that. And that'll, be at, that'll also be at 6.30, except on December 4th. So the Hawks win 5-2. They go to 7, 12, and 4. They get outshot 28, 21. They get out hit 31 to 30. And faceoffs were 29 to 25 for the Rangers, so they led in all those stats. On the power play, Chicago goes 3 for 4. The Rangers go 1 for 4. Morazic saves 21 out of, tw out of 22 before being uh, for getting getting injured, I guess, in, in, for, in the third period. Soderblom went 5 for 6. Halak saves 16 out of 20. He's not had the greatest year with the Rangers. Uh, the power play thing on the broadcast was broken, so it was really hard to keep track of penalty time, but I was able to do it. Uh, Rangers were wearing the reverse retros. Taze was, became fifth in Blackhawks uh, games of all time. Uh, Tenorti is out because of a hip injury. He's on IR. And Kane would also hit 1,200 points, so pretty interesting night. <laughs> Go to the first period. I'm like, I'm having a loss of breath. So the Rangers were pressuring early, and then on the first shot for the Hawks, uh, it's 17-21, a Chicago deflection goal from Reese Johnson, his second of the season from McCabe and Kachuk, to make it one nothing. and it's the fourth line once again, and they've been our most productive line, and then the rest of the team decided we get the message now. And by rest of the team, I mean first line. So, um... Domi to Kurashev, I don't know how we missed that. Lafreniere shot from VC uh, was was uh, saved. And then uh, Coach Richardson was hurt as he was holding a towel to his head, and he left the bench. The puck hit him in the head. He would return to the game, but it was just he was strange. He got stitches and came back. It was, he got more stitches than anyone else did on the ice tonight. It was so absurd. And um, at 8:29, it's a New York penalty to Kreider for interference, which would be killed. Uh, and then at 149, it's a Chicago penalty to Morazic, which would be served by Radish for delay of game, which would be killed. Um, McCabe saves a goal on a scramble in front, and there was no shot for a good 16 minutes, or that's 13 minutes from the Hawks. And we go to the second period, where it's, uh, the Rangers started with 11 seconds on the power play, and then Kara and Truba dropped the gloves. If you remember from last year, it's a little stuffed up. Um, Truba took Kara out for the season, uh, around 25 to 30 games into the season. Kara was done for the year. And Truba, I, there were some things he did in this game I thought deserved at least some finding or something like that. Because he and, he and Kara dropped the gloves and they have a good tussle. Would it be the last fight? And so at 16:38, it's a Chicago penalty to Kara and a New York penalty to Truba, both for fighting. And what led to that also was if there was a big hit on Dickinson by Truba, that one was clean, and then he hits Kara, and then they decide to drop the gloves. Then uh, Kreider had a wide open net, which would be saved, and there was a post from VC. And then at 13:43, it's a Chicago penalty to Seth Jones for tripping, which would be killed because it would be four on four for 43 seconds after a 12:26 New York Ranger penalty is advantage at for slashing. So that happens, and it's now four on four. And then at 11.36, 50 seconds later, um, it's a New York penalty to Carpenter, the former Blackhawk, for slashing. So it's 5-on-4 for a minute and 17 seconds. It's hard to keep track of this. And then, so it's, no, that was 5, so then it was, it was, um, so the Rangers had a 5-on-4 for a minute 17 seconds. It became 4-on-4 four four for 43 seconds. No. Hang on, I, I'm, I'm losing it here. So it's 4-on-4 four four for 43 seconds. Um... You know what? Screw it. Whatever. But it's, it ends up being a 5-on-3 eventually after the Seth Jones penalty is killed off. So it's a 5-on-3 for a minute and 10 seconds. And, there's, uh, and so on, on that 5-on-3, uh, it's, it's off. Uh, Seth Jones uh, sla slaps a shot toward the net. And at 11:23, it's a Chicago rebound power play goal. It's a Patrick Kane, his fourth of the season, from Seth Jones and Domi to make it 2-0. It was right off the rebound. The rebound went off Halak right to him. And, and then a minute, exactly a minute later at 10.23, it's another Chicago power play goal. It's a snipe from Max Domi, his eighth of the season from Seth Jones and Kane, which makes it 3 nothing. And so it's, it was 5 on 4 for 57 seconds after that 5 on 3 goal. And then the other, the other goal just kills off the rest of the power play. And there was no chance for Halak on that, uh, on that second one. That third one he probably should have had. But there was three goals on nine shots for the Hawks, and we were halfway through the game. 
So, Kreider hits the post. Rangers pressure. Hawks are doing good stick checking. 9-14, Chicago penalty to Kachuk for hooking, which would be killed. Taze was taken down and there was no call. And those, um, I said two goals in a minute. Athanasiu then got hit high by Truba. He, it wasn't just high, it was in the head. Athanasiu not, got hit in the head, gets hit in the head by Truba, and fights break out all over the ice. Murphy pairs off with Goodrow, and Taze then pair, Taze goes after Truba. And somehow, after all of that, at 247, there's penalties for Murphy and Goodrow each for fighting. Uh, Taze and Truba each get a fighting, and then Taze gets the extra penalty, which would be served by Kachuk for the instigator. That's they've got to fix the penalty system in the NHL because what the, what people are getting penalties for these days is just absurd. When when someone lays a headshot and hit and doesn't even get penalized, but someone who goes after the guy that did get the headshot and they just have a simple fight, which should be just five, five minutes each, should it be an extra penalty? It's that's just stupid. It's really stupid, and the NHL has been stupid for a while, and they just don't want to clean up their crap. It's as simple as that. Um, then at 2.09, uh, because on the penalty, um, because of the penalty on the power play, the Rangers score. It's a power play goal from Mika Sabanajad at 2.09, 13th of the season from Fox and Panarin, which makes it 3-1 before the end of the period. And then end of the period, Morazic covers up and gets pushed a little, and more scrum and fighting happen, and we go to the third, and Morazic doesn't start, because I assume he was hurt at some point during that little tussle like he got run into or something, but it'd be the second time this season he'd be injured. So yeah, Soderblom starts the third, Morazic was not on the bench, and at 15-28, it's a Ranger penalty to Truba for hooking. Uh, Trocek hit the post, Kane to Athanasiu just missed, Hawks pressure, and then on the power play, 15-14, third power play goal of the game, it's uh, from it's a deflection from Taylor Radish. Seventh of the season from Kane and Domi. And with Kane with that assist, hits 1,200 points in the NHL. Great milestone for him. Caleb Jones interfered with Trocek and there was no call. Uh, Zabanajad had a shot wide. Domi had a breakaway saved. And there was a Bronx cheer for Halak when that breakaway was saved. So I thought that was very interesting when the crowd just, go, when the crowd just like goes nuts because he made a save. Yeah, that they were, the crowd was getting in on Halak tonight, that, that, last night. VC was stopped. The Rangers are fine, are firmly in control. Five to go. Then at four fourteen, it's a Chicago penalty to Blackwell and a Ranger penalty to Goodrow for cross checking. So it would be four on four for the for that. Sorry about that. So with the Rangers firmly in control and a four on four, Kreider collides with Soderblom and the Ra- the Rangers had pulled the goalie at four minutes, uh, and and so they're up. So now they're up five on four. Uh, so. Then Kreider collides with Soderblom as the puck goes in off of him, and it's a Ranger goal to Chris Kreider's 12th of the season from Zibanejad and Panarin to make it 4-2. And it was some pretty, I thought, it, it was goaltender appearance. McCabe kind of pushed him into it, but Kreider didn't necessarily make a huge effort to move and get up out of the way. So I, I guess it's a good goal, not one I'm particularly happy about, but it made it 4-2. And then Panarin hit the post. Rangers call a timeout at 2.45. Oh, then again, right after that goal to see if they can get anything else going. Uh, Rangers pull Halak again at 2.30, and then they would pull him again at 1.30. Uh, Blackwell missed an empty net. Uh, Kurt Kurashev nearly put one in, but then at 1.14, it's a Chicago empty net goal to Max Domi, his ninth of the season, second of the game, from Dickinson and McCabe to make it 5-2 to two, as the Hawks beat the Rangers in New York and a t- on a team that's really struggling right now. And, um, yeah, they didn't really move anywhere in the standings because the Coyotes, they also had an overtime loss, so they had the same amount of points. And now they're three points behind the lowest team in the lead, in the league, which is the Ducks. The Hawks currently sit at 32nd in the league. But, yeah, I've already made out my um, script for, if I could get that on camera, yeah, I've already made out my script for this game because it starts in 30 minutes. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I don't really have anything else to say, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I shall see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.